In this problem, we're given a function and an interval, and we're asked if Rawls' theorem applies, and if it does, we have to find the value of c. Let's carefully go through the conditions. So the first condition in Rawls' theorem is that the function should be continuous on the interval that's given. Uh, it actually is. It's the sine function. It's continuous everywhere. So I'll go ahead and write f is continuous on 0, 2 pi. So there's no issues there. It's certainly continuous. The second condition in Rawls' theorem is that the function is differentiable on the open interval. Well, it's the sine function, so it's differentiable everywhere. So in particular, f is differentiable. I'll just put diff on the open interval, so 0, 2 pi. So that condition also checks. The third condition is going to require a bit more work. We have to make sure that the values uh, at the endpoint are the same. So we have to plug in 0 into our function and see what we get. So that'll be 8 times the sine of 0. And the sine of 0 is 0, so you just get 8 times 0, which is 0. And let's plug in 2 pi. So that'll be 8 times the sine of 2 pi. And the sine of 2 pi is also 0, so this is 8 times 0, which is 0. So we have that f of 0 is equal to f of 2 pi. So all three conditions are satisfied. So the answer is yes. You know, Rawls' theorem does actually apply. So now we do have to find C. So Rawls' theorem says that when all three conditions hold, you can find some number, which the theorem denotes by the letter lowercase c, such that the derivative is equal to 0 there between 0 and 2 pi. So now we'll just take the derivative and look for all of the answers between 0 and 2 pi. So f prime of x. Now you could call it c if you wanted to. You could, you could write f prime of c, uh, but I'll just use x. So the derivative of sine is cosine. So this will just be 8 cosine x. And then we set this equal to 0. All right, so we're looking for all answers between 0 and 2 pi where this is true. Let's divide by 8 just to make it a little bit cleaner. So this is cosine of x equals 0. And again, you could use c. I just like using x. So to figure this out, the easiest way to do it, for me at least, is to think about the unit circle. So here's the unit circle. And on the unit circle, every ordered pair can be thought of as being an ordered pair of the form cosine theta comma sine theta. And here the angle is 0. Here it's pi over 2. Here it's pi. And here it's 3 pi over 2. So we want the places where the x-coordinate is 0, right? Because cosine is the x-coordinate. That's going to be right here. And it's going to be, uh, no, not, not right there. Sorry. <laughs> That's the y-coordinate. <laughs> it's going to be, let me use yellow. It's going to be right here, <laughs> this giant yellow dot. And it's going to be right here. So the big yellow dot. That's when x is 0. So here the ordered pair is 0, 1. And here the ordered pair is 0, negative 1. So one angle will be pi over 2, and the other angle will be 3 pi over 2. And we just have to make sure that we're good. Yeah, we're between 0 and 2 pi. So those are the only places where the angle is 0. So those would be the values of c. So you could write c equals pi over 2, and c equals um, 3 pi over 2. Or you can use x. It doesn't really matter. Um, that's it.